Hello, I'm Brandon Drury. In this exciting edition of Killing with Cubase, we're going to talk about auxiliary sins. Okay, um, in this video, we're going to talk about auxiliary sins. And um, let's see, how do I even start this? Okay, so let's say we've got... Let's take our, this is a little silly thing we've made, a little pop thing you were working on. Uh, okay, and we'll talk about this little intro thing. Now, let's say we wanted to add a delay to this virus. The virus is this little bell thing. I guess it's a bell. Hell, I don't know this music stuff. All right, so first thing we need to do is, in Cubase, is going to be called an effects channel. Is we'll right click and uh, effect, add effects channel track. Click on that and it says, Well, what the hell do you want to use? And I say, I don't want a delay. And for this, I'm going to use the old Kajara's classic delay. It's a freebie, but I love the thing. I use it all the time. Now, because it's uh, an ascend, a parallel gadget, we're going to use 100% of the effect, no direct signal, because the direct signal will keep on flowing down to the stereo out or whatever. So, We'll solo this just to make life easier for us to hear. All right, and then still nothing. All right, we click on Mr. E the same way we would add an insert over here. But but now, da -dum, da -dum, we will move over to the sentence. And we've got up to eight of these. So we'll click on the little arrow thing. And then right here we see our classic delay. It says FX1 classic delay. All right, and there she is. So. And we just slide this over to add stuff, or add, to determine how much we want to use of it. Oh, because I already had it soloed, it does weird things, but now we're okay. If we're going to go crazy. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so that's kind of how that works, and the less we want to use... if. You can barely hear it now. So, if we wanted to set it exactly to zero, hold control, click, and it goes straight to zero. Pretty awesome. And then we also have pre fader and post fader. And we won't get too crazy with, with this explanation because you can see it in the manual and just kind of basic stuff you need to know. If you don't know this, just ask on the forum, we'll help you. I record and review. Um, at the moment, we have this thing pulled down, let's see, minus 8.77 dB. Um, and we don't have any inserts. Well, we could, let's just say we put an EQ on this. Or, 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 or yeah. Good old Cambridge again. And we knocked all the top end off. So we're going to make this thing sound dull. Forget the delay for now. It's off. And you can see I turned this delay, or the send off by pushing that button. Let's actually make it even duller than that. Now, at the moment, the signal is flowing through all of our inserts to this fader and then going to the stereo out. And our send our then will also be kind of, it'll be catching it right after this fader. So it's going to go through the inserts in there. And that means a dull signal is also being sent to this delay. Now, and it's down attenuated by almost nine decibels. If we push the pre fader button, it's skipping all the inserts and it's skipping this. In other words, right here, and it goes as well as going there. And so that's kind of the parallel thing, like you hear about parallel compression. We're sending it to an additional place. And I don't like to use the splitting word, although it's kind of what it is, because split kind of sounds like it's 50% here and 50% there. Well, this is still 100% doing its thing. This is just an additional thing. And so the signal's actually gonna get louder. We're gonna have more than we started with. But anyway, this is pre-fader, so we're, What's going to happen is that this is going to get the full bright sound, and it's going to be nine decibels louder, uh, it's as if the fader was like this, and this was bypassed like that, or more like that too. Okay, so let's go back down to, to nine decibels, and let's hear this. Now the tricky thing—it's hard to hear because the delay has top end knocked off, which is kind of a crucial thing in delay most of the time, but. Uh, you get the point. So if we ever needed that for some reason, or you wanted to bypass that, you have it with the pre-fader button. I don't use that all the time, but it happens. I do use it, depending on what I'm up to. So 
but 90% of the time probably or more, I'm, I'm uh, just using it like this. So that's the basic of sins. Now, um, this particular sin, let's not, let's pull the feedback down. So it's kind of just like a, like a one, one repeat type of thing. Okay, and you hear that, and that's pretty cool. I don't hate that. But let's say we wanted to send that delay into a reverb. We could come back down here, create a new track, and uh, something about delay through a reverb is an awesome little trick. I just love it. So I just do it all the time. And back to the UAD stuff, and we'll pick... Um, I do like this, re this true verb thing. I... Uh, a real verb. I get all these damn things mixed up. Okay, and so we create another one, and it's stereo, and that shows up there, and here, and I'm going to set the mix to 100% again because it's a parallel thing. Um, all right, now, and what I'm looking to do is add dimension to this delay. A lot of hardware delays actually come with reverbs built in, and so we're going to send this to there. Now, I'm going to turn this up quite a bit. And it kind of has more of a unicorn sound to it, you know, a little bit more. It, and I don't always want the unicorn sound, but that's just kind of how this happened, and we're just using presets that came with the, the gadgets. But um, for lots of stuff, even like rock stuff, metal stuff, I might use a delay like that and just it adds a little bit of something to it. And again, it's not always unicorn, but the point here is that we can send one aux send to another. And we can also send those to groups, or we, as we covered earlier, we can t take all of our stuff we've got here at the moment. Let me show you, like, let's just say this virus, let's go ahead and send it to group 10. And we could also send these to group 10. And we're not going to hear these because group 10 is currently muted. But. So this is the whole shoot and match right here. And we can kill all of it. And let's just say that's how we, we perfectly wanted our, our thing to sound. And we could from now on refer to this as to, uh, I don't know, improved virus. And so if I wanted to adjust the level on the virus, the synth, that's the track we're hearing, then I get it right here and do my panning. Or that right there. So you get the idea there. Okay, so let's see. I guess that pretty much covers everything with auxiliary sends. Um, we can use auxiliary sends on audio tracks. We can use it on returns from uh, synths uh, or samples, like on virtual instruments like Battery 3. This won't make a lot of sense, but uh, it'll show the point or make the point. Let's uh, let's go to the more chorus section, which hits a lot harder. Okay, so we have. All right, so there's our drums. Now these aren't sent to any group, but we could send all these to a drum uh, bus, or we could again. These are group. Or, wait, no, these aren't groups. These are. Uh, returns where MIDI is going out of this particular track, smashing into the sampler, and the out audio outputs are returning on these kind of greenish beige type channels. And they can also, just like any other audio track, send to a delay. Now this isn't all of our drums, but let's crank that up. What's wrong? Okay, that's pretty crazy. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but the point is you can use it. Um, and then we've got our groups, which also can be sent to auxiliary sends. So if you had all, let's say, 10 drum tracks combined into your groups and wanted to send those to just a little bit of reverb uh, as a whole with overheads and, and kick drum and everything, uh, you could do it um, right here. And it works the same exact way. So kind of like anywhere audio flows, it pretty much plays by the same rules. Um, one, one question it's kind of asked is what's the difference between groups and auxiliary sends, meaning or uh, effects channel tracks, and it's kind of getting where not a whole lot. In fact, I don't even 
know what to tell you because I don't even know the answer. And I'm getting now where I use more and more groups um, instead of effects tracks. And it, it used to be in the old days, these things were kind of limited to what they could do in terms of routing. But now you can do anything you want. Um, so with, with Cubase 5 at least. So in, in, and on. So um, I guess that pretty much covers auxiliary sends. And again, if you guys have any questions on this, I know this one can be a little bit confusing. Uh, don't be shy at all to post it on the, on the forum. And if you don't get the attention you need, then shoot me an email, brandon at recordingreview.com. Thanks, guys.